So um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to today's um, Harmonize to Energize. My name is Terry Matthews. I've been a Jin Shin Jitsu practitioner for at least 30 years. And it's my pleasure to share Jin Shin Jitsu self-help once a week, every Friday at two o'clock New York time. Welcome everybody and anybody who's brand new. Jin Shin Jitsu is an art of harmonizing life energy, or say it's sometimes called Chi or Ki, as it moves congruently or not through our body. And it does that by moving through what we call energy pathways, which we can regulate by 26 safety energy locks. They have the same role as points in acupuncture to regulate the movement of energy, but they're the width of our, or the diameter of our individual palm. And we place the palms of our hands or the back of our hands, thumbs, fingers on these energy locks to regulate the flow of energy and to bring our whole body, mind, spirit into greater harmony. Um, please um, mute yourself if you haven't already. Um, yeah, okay, is everybody? Yeah, I oh, know, I need to mute someone. Okay. So for the past several weeks, we've been exploring third depth as it moves from sixth depth and relating that to the movement of the constellations in the heavens as we move from <clears throat> Capricorn through to Aquarius, we moved from sixth depth to the third depth, which at that juncture in time is facilitated by the gallbladder flow. And through various discussions and practices, we began to feel what it is like to experience a harmonized gallbladder energy, or maybe we didn't feel it was immediately harmonized, but we began the process of harmonization. And today, as we're moving towards a different constellation, in about five days, we're gonna move into the sign of Pisces, which um, governs the liver, which is also part of third death. I'm gonna round off the discussion with the gallbladder by having us experience a different approach to, or well, to some people it may not be different, to self-help gallbladder using the last step before the first step. Often you will hear in classes that um, the self-help for any flow is either the first or the first two steps of a flow. And there's also this idea of the first shall be last and the last shall be first, meaning the first step of the flow will be the last step of the flow you do. And the last step of the flow will be the first. Why is that? Because in the principle of movement of energy, the first step is giving a gentle push to the energy to help it move through your body, through the energy pathways. And the last step is pulling. So it's a push and a pull. And <clears throat> there can be a different experience by beginning the self-help with the pull before the push. I mentioned before the idea of an escape route. And Mary Burmeister, who brought Jin Shin Jitsu to the West, spoke often of how it was very helpful to create a goal, if you like, or a place where the energy knows it has to move to before you begin moving it. And it's the same principle here. So we'll, we'll practice the last step and the first step of a gallbladder flow, and we'll, we'll use the left flow, because in Jin Shin Jitsu, that encourages the exhale 
And in this art, we want to encourage an exhale because the principle is to let energy move down, which happens as we exhale, in order to receive energy as it goes up on the inhale. And those of you that have been following these classes or these presentations know that I particularly like to work with Mary Burmeister's technique of the 36 breaths. For those of you that are new, uh, Mary was um, exploring numerology and numbers are like the, the science of the universe. Numbers are the maths of the universe, if you like. And if you add a three and a six together, it comes to a nine. And nine understand, understood numerologically is the end of a cycle, beginning of a new. So subsequently, Mary used that information to structure four sets of nine breaths. The reason it's four is in numerology, the four uh, safety energy log, which is at the back of the head, is the window that lets in more light. And we want as much light as possible to move through our body because at the unmanifest level, that is what energy is, it's light. Before that, it's sound, but as it's entering the body, it's light. And <clears throat> we do it four times. And that also represents a movement from different dimensions, from the subtler to the gross. And there's, there's different variations on a theme. We'll talk about the four levels being the eighth depth, the seventh depth, the sixth depth, and the third depth. The sixth depth, third depth is that relationship we've been discussing the past several weeks. So there is this movement, this stepping down from subtler to denser dimensions. You don't have to imagine or think about it. It'll happen if you let it happen. And uh, so we prepare ourselves for these kinds of practices by keeping our spine as straight as possible, or our back as straight as possible. If you have any weaknesses in your back, any projects there, then you can put a cushion behind your back to support your spine. Nothing wrong with um, sensible support. You can sit up <clears throat> as straight as you're able. If, if you find yourself moving over, that's fine. Sometimes the body is tired and we lurch over a little bit. It's okay, but just bring yourself gently back to that, that upright position. And as the energy enters the body, it actually does enter in two places, but for the purposes of this practice, we're going to talk about it mainly entering through safety energy lock four, moving down the front through safety energy lock 15, down to safety energy lock seven. 15 is the hip line, seven is the big toe. And then it moves back from the big toe through the hip line back to the occiput safety energy lock four. It moves in a spiral. Clockwise, apparently everything in the universe prefers to move in a clockwise direction because that reflects harmony. It's like positive thinking representing harmony and the energy moving this way will invite a harmonious vibration and frequency of energy in my understanding. So, what we need to know is if we're going to practice self-help, what are these particular steps for the gallbladder? And we're going to do four separate sets of nine exhalation inhalations, one breath being an exhale and an inhale. And we're going to start on the left side. So um, we put the left hand on the left number 12 safety energy lock, and that's close to the cervical vertebrae between the two tendons on the side of the neck. And because we're gonna start with the last step of the flow, it's gonna be the right hand on, drop your hand down underneath the shoulder girdle to safety energy lock 22, all right? <clears throat> 
And we're going to do nine exhalations, inhalations, just holding our hands in these positions on the neck and under the shoulder girdle, beginning with the left. Then we're going to switch to the right side for another set of nine. And then we're going to start holding fingers and we're going to hold first the left middle finger and we're just going to hold it palm side with our thumb connecting to the palm side of our middle finger and then to the right the palm side of our hands represents helping the exhale so we're going to emphasize again the exhale but also in this case Gallbladder is a descending flow. Exhale helps things descend. So again, we're homing in on the gallbladder energy. So let us begin. So left hand on the left 12 to begin with, and right hand on the left 22 like this. Left side of neck, right hand under the left shoulder girdle. And you can place fingers or palms and just sitting up straight. Close your eyes, stun any cell phones that might be malingering in the background, and just breathe out. Just exhale. And allow this light, this universal light, entering the fore at the back of the head, and then moving down the front of the body, connecting here with this last step of the gallbladder flow then moving down to safety energy lock 15 in the groin and then to the big toe and then as we inhale we receive the breath the energy moves up the back so let us do nine exhalation inhalations here we go And just breathing out and in at your own pace, your metabolic rate is likely to be different to mine. No need to rush, just allow. And as the light comes in, it will find its way down the front and up the back of your body. A good sign that this energy is moving where you want it to between these particular positions for the, gold, for the gallbladder is that you will feel pulses at these two energy locks. And this is the blood pulse, which follows the energy pulse. It's the same pulse that you will feel or sense or hear at your radial artery in the wrist. And if you're new, or even if you're not, don't forget, there's no need to be anxious if you're not feeling the pulse. Sometimes there are resistances, blockages in the energy pathway, which take a little while to release. And even though we're going to be doing 36 breaths overall, sometimes you need to do more because the energy needs a little more support. It needs a little bit more of a push and a little bit more of a pull.
be aware of how well your feet are connecting to the floor beneath you, the ground beneath. It's important to feel that connection. Otherwise, we can maybe feel a little spaced out. We need to bring this light from heaven, if you like, heaven the head, to earth the feet. We need to be aware of the strength of that connection. This is how we bring our visions, our goals into manifestation. Sometimes just squeezing the toes, curling them will help you make a better connection. And when you complete the ninth exhalation inhalation, just witness how you're feeling. Notice any sensations in the places in your body where your hands are or in other areas because the gallbladder flow itself is much longer and it will circulate through different areas which we are encapsulating with our hands. So just notice maybe you feel some stuckness in a certain area. It's okay. Just a reminder that maybe you need to let go of that blockage a little more by breathing out a little more. Then we're going to do another set of nine, and this time we're going to do the right side. So the right hand goes on the right side of the neck. Go to the cervicals, pull away till you find the tendons. Hold there. Then the left hand goes under the right shoulder girdle. So we've got safety engine lock 12 and safety engine lock 22, for those more familiar with the designations. And we begin the process again of exhale, inhale, nine times. Let us begin. See if you can feel your shoulders sinking down, down, almost as if they're aligning or sinking into your feet. And allow all the unnecessary thoughts, the dirt, the dust, the greasy grime, as Mary would quote, to release all the burdens that your shoulders are holding. Let them go. Feel the connection to your feet and the earth beneath. And then receive the breath on the inhale, cosmic purified energy. Circulating back up again in a positive clockwise direction.
letting go in order to receive. And notice how you're feeling. with where you are feeling. Allow the mind to take a vacation. And just allow the breath to lead. The light Lead. Any disturbing thoughts arise during this process? Just let them go. And as we let them go, we feel much more peaceful. And in Chinese medicine, the heart governs the mind. So if you're feeling peaceful, your mind will quieten down. And any disturbing thoughts will begin to neutralize. Is it possible to reach a state of awareness where there are no thoughts? Some people say no, others say yes. We're the explorers, let's see what we discover. Mary Burmeister would always say, be your own testimony. There you have the palette of the 26 safety energy locks, and we begin to paint our journey every time we practice. Okay, so that's the first and last steps of the left and right raw bladder flow. Now for the, the last two sets of nine, we're going to begin by holding the left middle finger. At the attitude level, it represents gallbladder and liver. Gallbladder is a descending flow, so we're going to hold the middle finger arm side. When we have our fingers palms down, the energy moves down, descends, gallbladder descends. So just hold your thumb over that middle finger on the palm side. First on the left and then on the right. And you can place your hands comfortably. Just sit in your hip line area, in the groin area. Sit up straight and let us begin nine exhalation inhalations.
Master Jerome Marai, who taught Mary Burmeister, our teacher, said that eventually people would begin to experience the big non-secret secret of the fingers and the toes. Fingers are known as generators of energy and toes regenerators. So perhaps now you can see why it's important we breathe from head to toe. And, you know, <clears throat> the fingers can help us harmonize what is possibly the biggest cause of our energy blockages, attitudes, our emotional responses that have become crystallized through habitual thinking in that way, habitual expression of those attitudes. If we're habitually frustrated, angry, and holding the middle finger will help us harmonize that attitude. And if we're not, it will just help us strengthen the third bit, the essence, the blood essence, which creates and purifies all our organs and cells. So it's a win-win. We transform the attitude and we rebuild, strengthen, rejuvenate, regenerate all the physical organs, cells, body parts, liver and gallbladder. Again, feel that connection with the ground beneath. Feel your feet, your toes. The toes activate regeneration. Fingers, generation. We need both. And eventually the two become one, which in Jin Shinji two we can represent by Six step main syndrome, the spine. So, again, as you come to the ninth exhalation inhalation, you can just pause and witness how you feel, where you feel. It can be quite amazing, quite awakening to realize the potential of our fingers to harmonize us. How simple is that? How powerful it can be. I know of someone who said that when he entered a room where there was disputes going on, if he held his own middle finger, he didn't specifically say which one, pretty soon the energy in the room changed. Greater harmony. Presumably any frustration, irritation transformed. Maybe you should experiment next time you find yourself in that type of energy feel.
So we observe after the ninth exhalation inhalation how we're feeling, where we're feeling. And maybe we're not thinking as much. And that's a good thing. Because as I said earlier, we want to reach a space of harmony in our heart. In Shinjitsu is known as an art of harmonization and compassion. And we feel that compassion in our hearts. If we have restless thoughts, we're not able to feel those qualities so well. So now for the final set of nine exhalation inhalations, we'll use the right middle finger. But again, we'll have the thumb on the palm side to accentuate the gallbladder energy in its descending roll. Just place your hands in your lap, groin area, sit up straight, and begin again nine exhalation inhalations. Those of you that um, have been following the past few weeks with this discussion of third depth will know that the gallbladder has a role in helping us <clears throat> break down fats, proteins, and also at the psychological level, it can also help us make clearer decisions. The gallbladder flow as it goes around the head and enters into the brain. And when there's less irritation, we can think clearer and see a bigger picture. The eyes are part of the third depth. And as we move through gallbladder and later liver flow, we can clean our vision. So we can see the bigger picture. Third depth is characterized at an elemental level by the element of wood. And there's a saying, you know, you can't see the wood or the trees. It's because there's too much activity going on. Once everything calms down, you can see the wood or your way through the wood. So let go and receive. Let go and receive. It may help you now that we've mentioned the element connected with third depth liver gallbladder as the tree, to imagine you have roots growing from your feet deep into the earth. Just like a tree. And the branches of the tree 
of bringing in more <clears throat> oxygen, drawing in more light. Feeding you, nourishing you. Middle finger is the longest finger. And in that respect, it goes with the energy having the longest journey to create all the other organs. That's what third depth does before it creates or manifests liver and gallbladder. It creates all the others. So it's important. In Chinese medicine, it's referred to as the prime minister and the soul. Jiro Marai studied traditional Chinese medicine, synthesizing his knowledge from that of traditional Japanese medicine and other modalities to originate what became known as Jin Shin Jitsu, art of longevity, art of compassion, art of the creator, through compassionate man or human. And as you arrive at the final exhalation, inhalation, the 36th breath, whether you're aware of it or not, you are different from when you began this cycle of thought. More light has entered. Now you may have noticed where it's not flowing as well as perhaps you would like. And that's your reminder that you're signal to spend maybe a little bit longer withholding either the steps of the gallbladder flow or the middle finger as we have. The practice doesn't end today. If this is a practice that has helped you, make use of it. Spend some time by yourself. Obviously, when we're in a group, the energy field is stronger. So if you're part of any kind of study group with Jin Shin Jitsu, it's a great opportunity to practice self-help. As the field grows, we receive more and we're able to give more. And that field, as it expands, will touch the environment, the immediate environment, and beyond the immediate environment, throughout your neighborhood, throughout your country, throughout the earth, and then perhaps beyond the planet, into the universe, to other galaxies, Who knows who's receiving what and where? But we know through science that energy can be transmitted thousands, millions of miles and received by satellites and then beamed back to us. 
So we know that energy can do these things. If we have the intention, we're like transmitters, receivers, aren't we? We want to share the energy. And as you give, you do receive. It's not a conscious me, me, me. I, I want to receive. You will naturally. The key is to be as much as possible unconditional. Sometimes that's difficult because we're in pain. Our body's given us a signal of discomfort. And our concern is how can we harmonize? That's okay. But a good thing to remember, I feel, is that even when we're suffering, if we can include someone else in our intention to harmonize, it will actually multiply or speed up the possibility of our harmonization. Some of you may have experienced that. It is, I believe, a natural thing to want to give. The plants do it, the trees we mentioned. They give us the oxygen that we need and, and they, they just open and receive. They don't demand, they don't subject us to give it to me. They just allow that natural process to happen. And that's a clue for us, I believe. And when we practice self-help, we're moving towards a more unconditional, open space where the universe can feed us and others. We become the fishes and we receive. So on, on that tone, on, on that level, uh, most of you that are familiar know that I love to ask if there's anyone who's got a birthday this week, or maybe early next week, or had a birthday, or a project that they're working with, and maybe they would enjoy receiving a boost from the energy field. In other words, us, the group, the circle, um, to help. Is there anyone there who wants to uh, celebrate in some way? Unmute yourself <laughs> or forever hold your peace. <laughs> um, anyone who, who's that? Mary. <laughs> Mary. Oh, I could use some help with a diaphragm project. <laughs> Okay, I'm trying to find you, Mary. I'm here. Yeah, I'm sure you are. Um, oh, yeah, Mary, there you are. Gotcha. Do you mind if I spotlight you? Go ahead. There you go. So welcome, Mary. I think you know the drill, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so actually the middle finger, strangely enough, or not, also features as a part of the diaphragm flow. So when we are offering Mary a blessing, you could accentuate those middle fingers and imagine that you're connecting middle finger to middle finger in the circle back to Mary. You could. That's an option. And you also could hold it for Mary. And Mary, that's your choice too. You could hold your middle finger or you could place your hands, arms up in your lap just to receive the energy. One thing I've always loved about Jin Shin Jitsu is its flexibility. There are many ways to allow the energy to be received. So everybody else, can we all sit up as straight as possible? 
And using any of those techniques, the usual one is we connect our thumbs and then imagine the little finger, but you can point your middle finger connecting all the way around or hold your middle finger. It's up to you. Mm. Breathe out and allow the cosmic purified energy which mm -hmm. you've been receiving 36 breaths of to now share with Mary for her condition. Just allow it. We don't control it. The energy knows where it needs to go. We've heard diaphragm, yes, but there may be other reasons why the diaphragm needs help. So allow the energy to go where it knows best to go. I'm going to do this. And I'm actually going to do this with my middle fingers. I'm going to hold them together like this. For those of you that know this mudra. So we get both middle fingers. I'm going to place it against my heart. And the rest of my fingers are going to connect with all of you. As we send a blessing to Mary for her condition. Here we go. And just allow the energy to flow through you to Mary and back to you. Connecting with the circle, circle of light. Creating a unified field. I don't know. I don't know. Mickey, send it on. The energy will naturally indicate when you have shared what is needed at this time. And you may feel a sense of withdrawal, the energy of withdrawing. And that's your signal. That all of us, and particularly Mary, have, have received what we need in this moment.
Yeah, me too. Oh. Okay, can you mute yourself? <clears throat> no. All right, so just sit quietly in the field. So thank you, Mary, for allowing us to share the energy. How did that feel for you? Very powerful, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Without you, we don't have the receiver. <laughs> <laughs> Although, of course, everyone in the circle is receiving. But, you know, it's like when we receive a Jinchin treatment and we focus there on the person who is with us with whatever project. So thank you for that. And <clears throat> how are we doing for time? I'm just going to... Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody. Um, today begins the first online five-day basic class Oh, the newest okay. instructor <laughs> for Jin Shin Jitsu Spirit Mind Body, Susie Plettner, who some of you know, some of you have met. She's certainly been on Harmonize to Energize, graciously sharing her wisdom. Well, today her class starts. Um, I'm going to be there with Lisa Gritton presenting, hosting. It starts at um, six o'clock. New York time going on to 8.30. So <clears throat> I'm just going to, oh, where's the information gone? I thought I had the information. Mm -hmm. ah, that's interesting. Let me see what happened to that information. Oh, there it is. Can I, can I, uh, no. There it is, it popped up. So here we have the class online tonight, my time this evening, um, <clears throat> this afternoon, I should say. There it is. And if you still haven't made up your mind, hold the middle finger, your gallbladder position. Maybe you will make a decision and you can still sign up. Um, clicking on here and all the different um, ways you can sign up are there. I'm personally really looking forward to this. Um, Susie, like I said, has been on Harmonize to Energize, and I have personally learned a lot from her. And I think you might too. So anyway, there's the possibility. Go on to the www.jsjinc.net website or the JSJSMB <laughs> website. And you can sign up there. If any of you want to do a presentation, our mystery presenter turns up roughly every two weeks. Um, please email me. My email is on the chat or in the chat. We do have a mystery presenter lined up for next week. Someone um, from the community who I... I have a lot of gratitude for someone who I hold very, very dearly and someone who I know many of you hold very, very dearly. So we're looking forward to next Friday. And this mystery presenter, I have no idea what the presenter will present, but that's part of the mystery too, right? Um, so we'll just look forward to that. 